Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the brand new MIDI remote in Cubase 12 to map any controller you have in your studio from scratch and you can make any controller do whatever you want in Cubase. Let's get started. First of all, I want to thank you so much for the amazing response for the Cubase 12 video that I did. I asked you to give me ideas on what to do next, what topics you'd like me to cover. And I took your responses in the comments and I decided to do my first video with a MIDI remote integration in Cubase. I know this is a burning subject. In my opinion, this is one of the big, big features in Cubase 12 because now you can have pretty much any MIDI controller take full control of the deepest Cubase functions. And even a generic remote controller can do these things now. So you don't necessarily need proprietary controllers. But before we get into it, if you're new here and you like what you see in this video, maybe you'd like to consider subscribing. My name is Dom Sigalas. I'm doing videos like this all the time, production, mixing, mastering, sound design, synths. So maybe you'd like to join us, subscribe down below, it's free. So today I'm going to use the Monogram CC as an example, as a MIDI controller. I've done a video about this, a really extensive video. Feel free to check it out. I'm gonna link it right here. And in this previous video, I've shown you how you can configure this in Cubase, but it wasn't very tightly integrated. I mean, you can do many things the way I showed you in that video, but now all the doors have opened to make this super integrated with Cubase 12. Now, everything that I'm going to show you here today applies to any controller that can transmit CC messages. So this is not specific to the Monogram CC, but I'm going to take this as an example because I actually upgraded it. I got some more modules. I got in touch with Monogram and I got some more modules so that I can accommodate all the new features with MIDI remote. So I'm really excited about this. But any MIDI controller will work. Any MIDI keyboard that has CC controllers, it will work. It's exactly the same procedure that I'm going to show you here today. So let's get started. As you can see, I have already created a profile for my Monogram CC. But in order to show you this, I'm going to disable this. I'm going to go here to my cogwheel and I'm going to disable this script so that we can create this script together. So. Let's get started. First of all, very quickly, I'm going to show you how I've configured my Monogram CC. As you can see, this is my template. I actually have two pages, but this is maybe a topic for a different video. And as you can see, I have my controllers here. I have my knobs, I have my sliders, my buttons, and also the orbiters right here. Now, for all of these, I have them to transmit a discrete CC message. For example, the first one is CC90 and absolute, okay? The second one is CC91, absolute. The same goes for my filter. You know, this is uh, CC74. I use it also for my synths. And as you can see here, I have my buttons as momentary CC controllers. Again, different CC numbers. Same with my orbiters, okay? CC108, you can use any CC number that you like, but you need to make sure that it's absolute. At least this setup works for the Monogram CC. Now, if you have a different MIDI controller, of course, this might be pre-mapped, so you don't have to do all these things, but the Monogram CC gives you all this flexibility because you can change the CC numbers for every one of these different controllers. Now, once you've done all this and you've set it up exactly like you want, of course, for these ones, I also have some press buttons because this can also be pressed. So uh, I have a CC80 for this one on the press mode. And again, I have this in toggle. That's gonna be important for later on. So this is the Monogram CC. If you don't have that, it's completely irrelevant. Don't worry about this. But now let's jump into how we can create our own profile in Cubase so that we can control even the deepest functions of the program. So let me show you how easy it is to do. I'm going to take you step by step and you'll see how quickly you can set up your own controller. So the first thing I need to do is click on this plus symbol and I'm going to add my MIDI controller to my setup. So hit plus. And as you can see, I have all my MIDI devices here. In this case, I want to select my monogram CC. Okay, monogram MIDI. There you go. For input and output. That's very important. Now, the next thing is vendor. 
if your MIDI controller is supported and it has a script straight out of the box, it will appear here. But in this case, I'm going to go for user defined. I'm going to call this monogram. You can do whatever you want. Modal monogram CC and script creator. You can have your name done. OK, next step. Now, here's where the fun begins. Here's where we can start creating our own template. And the beautiful thing with the Cubase 12 MIDI remote is that it can be also visually relevant to the controller that you're using. So let me show you how easily we can start creating and we can start mapping our controller. Check how fast it is, okay? So first, I want to map the top row of my encoders. So I can go here, mapped. I just touch it, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it. Now, all my encoders in the top have been assigned. OK, now maybe I want to add some buttons because these are also buttons, right? So I'm going to go and press the first button. OK, and I'm going to turn this into a button. See, we have three different types of controllers. We have knob, we have fader, and we also have button. So now I'm going to start assigning the button version of these encoders because you can also press them. All right. So now I'm going to turn this into a button and I'm going to start adding my buttons here. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I've assigned my buttons. Let's move on to my favorites here. So one, two, three. Perfect. Let's go back to buttons. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And now let's take care of my orbiters. These are going to be knobs, right? So let's go here. One, two, three. So as you can see, in just a few seconds, I've assigned pretty much everything. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I have my buttons here. My faders are here. My buttons are here. And my orbiters are right there. Now, these are already assigned. It's all done. But with the MIDI remote in Cubase, we can actually make this configuration look a little bit like our actual setup. And I love this because I can assign things very easily and I know where every controller corresponds to my actual hardware. So what I like to do is I like to select all these things. I'm going to take them down a little bit and I'm going to take these knobs right here, okay, like this. Now, I want this to be a little bit small because these are actually the same controllers. And then I'm going to take my faders, okay? My faders are a little bit longer, so I'm going to make them like this. All these things, I can move them with my keyboard, okay? So I can go like this and I use my arrow keys on my keyboard to make them exactly like they are on my control surface. So I'm gonna go like this. And you can select multiple ones by holding shift and just moving them around. So it's very easy to do this. Now, for these ones, because these are much, much bigger, right? I'm going to take these, put them here. And this one, I think I'm going to make it quite big so that I know this controller is my first orbiter like that. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And you can see that it already resizes it. So I'm going to make sure that this is exactly the same size. Let's make sure that it's the same size. Eh, perfect. So now I can make this one big as well. Make sure that it's the same size. And I'm going to place them right here. And this is it. My setup is done for this controller. And this has quite a few controls, actually. So let me go ahead and just make sure that my area is exactly where it should be. Make it like that. And now we're ready to hit next. But before we do this, I want to show you some controls that might be relevant for your setup, or they might not be. In my case, as you can see, I have my controllers here like this, and I want to make sure that my value is set to absolute, right? Sometimes it might make more sense if you send it to relative, depending on your controller. But if you find that the setup doesn't work as it should, maybe you should check this out, okay? In my case, for this specific setup for monogram, I need to set my controllers to absolute, okay? And you will see that all my CC messages correspond to my monogram assignments. 
done. Now I can move on to the next step, which is the final step. It's that easy. It's that quick. Now I can hit next. And as you can see, once I hit next, I get this dialog. Now this is where we can start assigning all these controllers to functions that are relevant to our workflow, to our setup. Now, in my case, I have a very specific workflow and I'm going to show you how I assigned my monogram and how I'm going to assign more controllers in the future. So basically the philosophy is you start with this window, you select the controller that you want and here you have a list of functions that you can use to control Cubase. So you have quick controls, you have selected track. We're going to use this right now. I'm going to show you. We have control room functions. We have mixed console functions. We have key commands. So you can assign key commands to any controller now. So this is really amazing. One thing that I was really excited that we have in Cubase 12 now is that we have revamped quick controls. Now, quick controls, in case you don't know, they can control any plugin in Cubase, audio plugin, compressors, EQs, reverbs, whatever you want, or synthesizers like virtual instruments. So you can have a filter assigned to quick control one, resonance to another quick control, and these will be saved globally. So you don't have to reconfigure it on every project, which is amazing. If you want me to do a video on quick controls, let me know because this is a big, big feature. But I definitely want to have all these knobs assigned to my quick controls. I want my quick controls readily available. So in order to do this, all I need to do is go to my focus quick controls. OK, and I'll check how fast this is. I select the controller, select my assignment and double click assigned. Select my controller, double click. 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 Select my controller, and so on and so forth. So my eight quick controls are already assigned. It's that easy. Okay, and now another thing that I need to do because I have one spare left. This is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to get another one of these modules because they are so handy. Now I'm going to go for my click volume. So I'm going to assign my metronome volume to this knob. So I'm going to select click on my functions browser. This is how you can find actually many things. Let's say EQ, let's say sense and all these things. I'm going to go for click and I'm going to go to my main click, not my Q sense because this is for my musicians and I'm going to go for metronome click level. Select, double click, and this is assigned. So let's say that I want these buttons to activate my send effects. OK, so I'm going to go to my selected track because this is where all these functions lie. And I'm going to go to send slots. So for slot one, I'm going to hit enable. OK, let's go for the second one. Slot two, enable three, four. Done. Now for this one, because it's the click, let's go for my click on off, right? So I'm going to go control room, click on it and click on off. Done. Now let's move on to the next ones. Now, as you can see, I have this control here. Now this one, I want to assign it to my send level. I want to make sure that I have access to my three first sends for every channel. These are the ones that I use the most, but obviously maybe in the future I'm going to upgrade and get another one of these fader modules here. So let's go back to select a track and I'm going to go to my sense. And in this case, I'm going to select level. So select level, select for my slot two level, select for my slot three level. OK, now before I move on to the buttons, let me show you some parameters that might be useful. OK, now, as you can see for my controllers right here, right here, I have the takeover mode. This is very important. Now, the takeover mode determines how the encoders will take control of any given parameter. For example, if you have jump, that means that if I have my knob set to a specific place, it will jump to this value. Most of the times I find that you don't want this. The second mode is pickup. This means that you have to turn your knob until it reaches the value that's set on your DAW in Cubase and then it picks it up. So it doesn't do an abrupt jump, right? But I found that in my case, the most useful mode is scale. 
scaled because scaled means that wherever it is, it's going to start scaling the value, which means that basically you touch and immediately you start controlling the value wherever it is. It doesn't matter if it's at 50, you're going to turn it up, it's going to go 51. You know what I mean? So I tend to have all my controllers to scaled. Okay, so I'm going to do this now. So scaled, scaled. Now for these ones, I actually like them to be on pickup. Okay, I want to be able to know where my value is and then it picks it up. So it depends on how you want to work, but you know, experiment and see what works for every function that you want to assign. Now, the buttons are also really useful because now I can say I want this button to open my VST instrument. So I'm going to tap on it, edit instrument. Okay, now let's say I want to open my channel settings as well, the channel settings window. I'm going to click on this edit channel settings. Now this one, this I'm going to assign to a function that I use all the time when I'm producing. And this is duplicate a channel without data. So let's say I have a retrolog instance and I have created a sound, but let's say I want to create a second part, then I can duplicate the channel. It doesn't duplicate the MIDI data or the audio data, but it gives me the exact same settings. It also works with, uh, you know, audio channels when you want to have a plugin chain and you don't want to copy the vocals or the same part. So for this one, I'm going to go for duplicate and see duplicate selected tracks without data. So double click and that's assigned. Now, another thing for the buttons, I make sure that I have them with toggle mode on because I want to make sure that I press it, the instrument appears and it doesn't close again. If you have it with toggle mode off, then the instrument will close again. Same with the edit channel settings. For this one, it doesn't matter because it's a key command, so it just presses that specific key. Now, let's move on to this one. For this one, I'm going to go for another category and I'm going to go for add. And let's say I want to assign it to add an instrument track. For this one, for an audio track, and for this one, I want to also assign it to something that makes sense for me. And this is select a bunch of channels and send all these channels to a group. So I'm going to go here to my mixer, add track to selected group channel. And that's it. I've assigned this. Now let's move on to my orbiters. These I'm going to use them for, again, some really specific features that I always use when I'm mixing, when I'm mastering, when I'm producing. And the first one, I'm going to assign it to my pan. And in order to do this, I'm going to select a track and I'm going to select pan left, right. Okay, select it, double click, pan left, right. Done. Now this one, I'm going to assign it to something that I use a lot as well. And this is my filter for the channel. So I'm going to select low cut frequency and I'm going to assign it to this one. And this one, I'm going to assign it, of course, to my pre-gain. Okay, gain right here. There we go. And I'm very excited about pre-gain because if you check my video about gain staging and how to get mixes loud, this is one of the most important things that you need to take care of when you start mixing. And of course, I'm also going to make sure that I have these on scaled as well. And you know what? We're ready. I've assigned pretty much all the main features in Cubase in just a few minutes. And I was explaining all these things to you. Of course, when you do it yourself, you're going to be way, way faster, I promise you. But it's that easy. It's just touch, assign, touch, assign, move a controller, assign. It's very, very easy. Now let's try and see if all these things work. Okay, I'm going to make my window a little bit smaller here, but you can see pretty much everything is right there. And now let's try and see if everything that we did worked. First, let's try and open my VST instrument interface. Boom, it's right there, okay? Channel settings, boom. Channel settings right there, okay? Now, let's say I wanted to add a new instrument track. Boom, I can add a new instrument track. Let's say I want to add a new audio track. Boom. Now let's say I have this retrolog instrument and I want to duplicate this without the track data. I can just push this button and immediately I have this duplicated without the MIDI. So this is really amazing. Now let's check out everything else that we did, right? I'm going to open my channel settings. Let's place it here and I'm going to turn on and off my sound effects. That's it. Let's turn them on again. 
And that's it. Now we have our send effects. Now let's try and check if we can control the three send levels for our first three send effects slots. As you can see already, it shows me that I have to go here in order to get the correct value. See that? It doesn't do anything because I have it in pickup mode. Okay, so now when it reaches the value, boom, now I can control my send. Let's go here. Same thing. See? There we go. And this is so satisfying. All my scents are here. And of course, if you have more faders, you can use the other faders for the same thing. Now, if I hit play, I can turn my click on and off. And I can control my click volume like this. Isn't this amazing? So let's say I have all these channels, I've selected them. Let's say I want to send them to a group. I hit this button here and I can say synths. Done that quickly. Now I'm telling you, this feature is a life changer. This is a game changer. You can become so fast with Cubase with this feature. And of course, you can assign pretty much everything. I'm just showing you some examples. You can assign the faders. You can assign the transport, play, stop, record, all these things. Let's check the other things that I did here, right? Let's say I'm going to open my channel settings. Let's see if my filter works. There you go. Now I have a high pass filter at my fingertips like this. Okay, let's try the uh, pregain. See, there we go pre-gain. And also let's try the panning. Beautiful. Bliss. And also the most important thing, let's see if our quick controls work. This is one of the biggest things. Okay, let's open my retro log here and let's see. See? Filter, resonance, my distortion, envelope, and I have also my filter envelope and my release right there. This is because I've set it up like this, right? So if I go to my quick controls, you can see that I've set it up this way. Again, let me know if you want me to make a video about the quick controls, but let's also try a plugin. And I'm gonna use a third-party plugin in this case. This is the uh, Plugin Alliance MC77. Love this plugin. I also have the hardware. Check it out. Inputs. Output, attack, release, and ratio, and so on and so forth. Everything is pre-assigned. So I load up a plugin and boom, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to mix. I'm ready to control it. And because you can set up the plugins the way you want, they're completely customized to your way of working. It's not like a pre-mapped thing that kind of has controls all over the place. And it's so satisfying because you can really focus on what you're doing. Let's say I want to control my retrolog here. See, I can control my retrolog. But then when I click on the plugin, I can just control my plugin straight away with the same controllers. How cool is that? I mean, I know I can get very excited about this, but whatever gives me a better workflow, it gives me tactile control and it saves me time. I'm going to cherish it. I'm going to be so happy about all these little things that make our lives faster. And the great thing is that now I've created this, I can use it over and over again. I can also create new pages with the same controller. Let me click on this and you will see that right now I have this page right here. It's my default page, right? Right? Now, if I want, I can add another page. I can add another mapping page and I can call it, let's say, Mixer. And I can have a different set of controls for my Mixer. You know, I can start adding more and more things. Maybe I can have a different section that's for my control room. Maybe a different section that's entirely key commands. All these things you can do with one controller. So even if you have a very small controller with just a few knobs and buttons, you can still do a lot of things by creating more and more pages. Now, once you've done this, you can go here to your remote manager. You can click on show script info and then you can actually export your script so that you can use it on multiple computers or you can exchange it with other users. And I'm planning to create scripts for pretty much every controller that I have in the studio because this is so much fun. It's actually very easy to do, but you need to, you know, have a plan and think, what do I want to control? You know, this is the most important thing. So I think it's very clear right now that the new MIDI remote opens a gateway to pretty much unleashing 
all the power from even the most simple and basic MIDI controllers. So in the comments down below, let me know how you assign your MIDI controller, which MIDI controller you use with MIDI remote, and what functions you have decided to control with your MIDI controllers. I hope this video was useful, my friends. If you liked it and if it helped, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, leave a comment below, and also share it with anyone else you think they might find it useful. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun with the MIDI remote, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!